Hi, welcome back to another video. Hi, this video is going to be in two parts, it's not going to be a long one, at least I hope not. The first part is going to be uh, the layout, or what I've got in my mind, uh, a layout of what my garden's going to look like through the next year, what I'm growing, because I've finally decided what I'm growing and where I'm going to grow it. So I'll show you that, and then the second bit is just a little update on uh, me propagator and how my seedlings are doing, that I've started off already. So we'll go straight in to the first part and I'll show you what I'm doing this year. Well this here is going to be sort of the master plan as it were for this year. Uh, the area I'm growing in is roughly 12 foot across and 16 foot from front to back and everything grows within this area. This area the wife wants us to keep it as an area where we can sit on an evening and eat out and generally lays about on the nice warm days when they come. Um, but Sort of this top area here is where I grow all my stuff. It's roughly the same layout as to what I had last year, so um, a few little changes. Um, but it worked last year, so I'll I'll use it again this year. So I'll just zoom in and I'll show you what I'm doing. Right, so starting over here, um, this is a, a new little area, I'm going to be digging this up normally, it's, all this is um, covered in little stones, sort of gravel, so I'll remove a little area for this bit and then I'm going to put some uh, winter squash which is I'll zoom out this one here. Um, I assume it's Japanese by the name. Uh, winter squash Uchichi Kuri. Well, I apologise for any Japanese viewers out there for the pronunciation of that if it, if it is, but um, it's not ready yet, but. Uh, Tea ship Japanese squash, so um, sweet and nutty. So I think I'll enjoy that. So basically, that is that. I'm going to do me Atlantic giant pumpkin in the centre, and then maybe another winter squash. And my first greenhouse, which is going to set. There you go. My first greenhouse, I'm going to have my organ melon, tomato money maker. I've got uh, last year I put two cucumber plants in a large pot and they did really, really well. So I'm going to do that again. My tomatoes I use single, but in my cucumbers I'm uh, going to plant two again. And in that one, it's my mini munch with Tasty King. That one is me tomato alicante, uh, me pepper, uh, big banana, me another tomato money maker. That is my um, it's another pepper uh, biscayne pepper, the uh, American one. Uh, another tomato money maker. 
in this corner here of this sort of sheltered area I've got uh, I'm going to plant some uh, I think it's blotty I, sh I showed you it last time uh, in a few videos back uh, it's like a blotty bean with peas in a like a trellis sort of affair in these four troughs here I'm going to have uh, and I did it last year with some degree of success uh, but I did plant the corn late so I'm going to be sort of on the ball this year and do peas and sw uh, sweet corn in them troughs uh, down here I'm going to do another cucumber but this is a gherkin and I'll zoom out to show you the gherkin I'm going to do um, it's uh, Canichon de Paris it's an outdoor variety for pickling because the daughter, my youngest daughter, she loves gherkins um, so I'm going to try them for her um, so I'll zoom back in so the cucumber gherkin will go there and here I'm going to try the aubergine which is black beauty a large fruit good flavor and texture I think it looks like some sort of what you expect an aubergine to look like so try that and um, a courgette which is the uh, now I'll show you it again there you go courgette it's a round one rather than your normal long ones these are more ball shaped and it's Tondo de Piacenza so I'll sow them at some point um, the so that's them two so I'm moving it down so in the second greenhouse I've got uh, the another melon which is Melba and that's the fella there looks really nice so it's melon Melba so that's that one another tomato money maker this one is my yellow cucumber with a mini munch Another tomato alicante on that one, money maker there, gardener's delight there, an LD and another money maker. And coming down to the bottom, I've got a squash, um, a, a different the well, the ones I'm doing up there are the winter Japanese one, and the one down here is called small sugar which is that one there which are like smaller type of pumpkin uh, actually it's not a squash it's a pumpkin but anyway it's this. Um, so that's not to be started until April so there's a while for that one yet before I start that one off uh, my final tomato which is a martina which is an outdoor one did really well with that last year and then I've got a couple of troughs down here and in them there's going to be my sweet pea collection with some broad beans um, so that's that area and I'll zoom out a little bit and then I've got two sort of large oval containers which are quite deep in them I'll put my lettuce I'll be able to get quite a few uh, both little gems and Lollaroso lettuce in them and these are my round um, vegetable container sort of sacks that you can get at B&Q 3 for a tenner um, and obviously there's going to be my Brussels sprouts again but uh, hopefully me, uh, the purple ones this year I've got my parsnips, which uh, is Gladiator this year. A couple of containers of them. I've got my leeks, 
Um, there's a couple of carrots, a couple of beetroot, different varieties. I've got uh, some turnip and as well as um, the turnips that I grew yes last year I'm going to try these this year and they're called golden ball and they look a bit, a bit like a beetroot type thing but obviously you can see where they get the name golden ball from um, and well you, you, you can sow them over a long period of time from April all the way through to August and you get a really long harvest so that's and of course dwarf and compact so it's uh, really good for growing in containers so that's looking promising that one uh, we've got uh, cauliflowers, a couple of containers of that uh, silver skin onions for me pickled onions and um, a container or maybe two of cabbage I'm going to try cabbage this year um, and the one I'm going to do is this one here and it's called Golden Acre Primo 2 uh, now the reason I picked this one rather than things like the Greyhound and what have you is when I read on the back it says it's a compact variety perfect choice for small gardens so I thought well I think that that might be better suited to, for my garden anyway so I'll give them a go golden acre cabbage um, and basically um, that is that is it um, I'm going to have me small pots because uh, I have a whole load of small pots that can stick maybe maybe one or two cabbage or one or two cauliflowers in um, uh, I'm going to have a pot to do this one which is a celery and it's a giant red traditional soup celery so I'll, I'm doing a lot, a lot of soups hopefully this year with my produce and um, although I don't like eating celery raw I do like it in, in soups it's not too overpowering in soup, so I like that. So I'm going to grow a bit in my garden this year of celery to help with my soups. Um, so basically, that um, that is a quick rundown of what I'm growing. Um, there's a few few new ones this year. Because I always think, you know, it's, it's always better if you can... Uh, it's more interesting if you grow some new things, some slightly different things. Uh, keeps the interest going, for me anyway. Um, I'm going to be sowing a few seeds today. Um, mainly because um, it's, it's about the time for them. Um, and I'm quickly going through a couple. I'm going to be sowing some winter density um, because this one, as you can see, it's sort outdoors. Well, from August all the way through winter, through to uh, April, and then harvest from March. So I'm going to have some winter winter lettuce. Um, the get this right. This is the Black Beauty. Uh, as you see, it says you can sow indoors from January. We're we're getting to the back end of January now, almost into February. So um, I think that'll be all right in me propagator. And the Melon Melba. Uh, as I say, it's back end of January, nearly February. So. I might start one or two of them out, see see how they get on, um, and I think that's about it for now. This little bit is for Dave, Dave's allotment. I can't remember if it's Blue Star or Bluster Dave. Um, 
I think it's Blue Star, I think it was talking about it. it used to be a band he was in years ago. Uh, but yeah, this little bit for you, uh, because in one of my recent videos, you were talking about, you know, uh, when I was uh, showing you how I sowed some of my seeds, uh, you were you were basically saying, you know, um, unless you're doing stuff for exhibition stuff, you shouldn't really be starting uh, stuff off at the minute, you know, uh, which is fair comment. It is freezing out there. Um, all the sort of uh, delicate stuff, um, cucumbers and melons and stuff like that. I can understand how, you know, putting them out, the cold will kill them off. I do follow the destructions on the back of these packets. Um, I slightly deviate from them when this year, for example, you can start sowing in February. I'll try them off in January in my propagator, and it's a big propagator, so it can hand, it, they can grow in there for quite a few weeks without needing to be uh, moved on, transplanted or moved. Um, but yeah, uh, even if after all that they end up dying off for whatever reason, too soon or whatever. I'll, I've got so many seeds, I'll just start them over again. Uh, I'll lose out. I get this, this packet of seed for free in all these garden magazines. Well, this is my collection of seed, as you can see. I've got packets and packets and packets of them. Uh, and some varieties of even, you know, things like the carrots. I've got three or four packets of the same veg. There's the mooley, and I've got one, two, three of them. The me Detroit Globe Radish, I've got three of them. So I've got no fear of running out of seed here. I've got absolutely loads of it. Um, so if they die, I'll try again. And if they're dry, uh, if they're dry, if they die a month later, I'll just try again. Um, but if the earlier ones do keep going, I've got to jump on the season. But I saw so many that I have enough and usually give a few away to my sister um, for her greenhouse. So I appreciate your comment. I can understand it. There's a lot more seeds I've got to sow, but like you say, uh, I do know later on in the, they've got to wait till later on in the year. Uh, but Thanks for the comment and what have you. Much appreciated. I'm pleased that you're watching it because I certainly watch your video channel and it's brilliant. Keep it up. So I'll leave it there. So see you later, Dave. Well, that's it. That's what I'm growing and where I'm growing it. So the next part of this video, and we'll go straight into it, is a little update on my propagator in the ceilings. Right, well there's my propagator. Um, quickly go through. These are my leeks. And uh, as you can see, they're all coming through quite nicely. A bit f flopping over a bit, but they'll grow, they'll strengthen and then straighten. So that's me open giant leeks, doing well. These are my broad beans, and as you can see, absolutely doing marvellous in these root trainers. Looking really green, really healthy. So they're doing well. Um, in a couple of days, I'll open one of them out and show you the root system on them. But yeah, they're doing well, just behind them, that fella there, that's the indigo, um, indigo rose tomato, the black one, so that one's doing alright. Uh, no sign of the comfrey yet, uh, or the organ melons, but we'll 
give them a bit more time. That is me Rubin Brussels sprouts. Doing all right there. Uh, this fella on the on the bank on the back is mini munch. Um, that's a tasty king. Two tasty kings looking all right. That was three tasty kings. The money makers got one, two. That one died. Three, four, five, six, seven. That one died. Eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten doing all right. I think the others died off mainly due to when I repotted them into these root trainers, I think I damaged the the stem. So that's probably what did them in. But you do get casualties at the back there. They've got the me parsnips that germinated. Um, I'm going to have more, but as you can see, there's one, two, three. There you go, I'll just see them at the back there. Three out of four so far. Just waiting for the other one to come through. In this one, I don't know if you can make it out. Big banana. So I've got two big bananas there. This one here is the uh, uh, I can't make out the label. Biscayne. Those two there. That one and that one is the Biscayne. Uh, that one is a Rasmataz. That's uh, a chilli pepper. Doing alright there. And then all these little ones. The Emmy strawberry ones. That I've transplanted. Um, I've seeded a few others in here. Uh, Tigerella, Alicante, and the other one, which is the Gardener's Delight. So they're all in, went to germinate. And what I'll do, actually, I might as well do it now. Uh, I'll just come out of this clip and so I can use both hands and I'll show you the root system on these see what it looks like right well these are the broad beans I've took them out I don't know if you can see at the bottom there but as you can see where the roots come out particularly that one there when they come out and they hit the air the die off and that's air pruning and what happens is it stimulates roots further up to start growing more and you get them all coming down so let's see what we've got in this one gently open and there you go as you can see all these roots are growing downwards which is what you want and as you can see, there's roots at the top that have been encouraged to grow. And as you can see, producing a very good root system. So that to me looks as though it's doing the job. And that's all, I'm, well, that's all you can ask for really. So that's me broad beans. Well I hope you found that interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. I don't know when I'm going to do another one because, well, the ones I can start now, I've started. There's plenty of others, but really, oh, I shouldn't really start them till, say, the back end of February. Otherwise, they'll just end up uh, being stuck in the house and they'll go tall and leggy and no good at all. So, I don't know when my next video will be out. I promise it'll not be long. Um, if things happen, uh, well, 
such as the broad beans getting transplanted stuff like that I'll make a video and I'll let you have a look or is in action or a frightening thought um, so that's it like subscribe comment pass the word and the word is Samuel's pot garden that's three actually Rose Counting. See you later. Bye now.